गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी विल डिस्कस द टॉपिक हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी ऑफ सिस्टमिक फंगल इन्फेक्शन फंगल इन्फेक्शन आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज माइकोसिस एंड दे आर कैटेगराइज इन टू फोर सब टाइप्स फर्स्ट इज सुपरफिशियल एंड क्यूटेनियस माइकोसिस विच अफेक्ट द वेरी सुपरफिशियल लेयर्स ऑफ स्किन हेयर एंड नेल्स सेकेंड कैटेगरी इज सब क्यूटेनियस माइकोसिस विच इन्वॉल्व स्किन सब क्यूटेनियस टिश्यू एंड लिम्पैटिक्स this rarely disseminate systemically third category is endemic mycosis these are the fungal infections which can cause serious systemic illness in healthy individuals fourth category is opportunistic mycosis these are the serious systemic illnesses which can be life threatening which affects immunosuppressed and immunocompromised individuals so let us see general characteristics of systemic mycosis systemic mycosis are caused by dimorphic fungi which infect immunocompetent and immunocompromised individuals so what are the dimorphic fungi dimorphic fungi can grow as filamentous mold form at the room temperature that is 25 degree celsius and they can grow as yeast cell form at our body temperature that is 37 degree celsius and the systemic mycosis are transmitted by inhalation their mode of transmission is common that is inhalation of respiratory droplets which contain the fungal organisms and the systemic mycoses are geographically restricted that means certain mycoses are seen in certain areas they are endemic to those areas so we will simply divide systemic mycoses under these headings that systemic mycoses which affects immunocompetent individual and those affect immunocompromised individuals so systemic mycosis which affect the immunocompetent individuals are first is histoplasmosis second is blastomycosis third is coccidiomycosis fourth is paracoccidiomycosis and similarly the systemic mycosis which affect immunocompromised individuals are candidiasis cryptococcosis aspergillosis zygomycosis pneumocystis pneumonia and talonomycosis so let us start and we will see each disease or mycosis under some headings and these headings are under causative organism mode of transmission clinical features their pathogenesis investigations and most important part microscopy so first systemic mycosis which affect immunocompetent individuals is histoplasmosis it is caused by histoplasma capsulatum and they are transmitted by inhalation of dust particles from soil which is contaminated with bird or bat droppings that contain spores so primary source of infection is a soil which is contaminated with feces of bird or bat and the endemic areas are united states of america and south america countries so let us see the clinical features histoplasmosis often it forms a self limited infection but often it can it can be seen as latent primary pulmonary involvement too or it it can progress to form a chronic progressive secondary lung disease which is localized to lung apices and causes cough fever and night sweats if this is is more uh, this is more severe it can spread to extra pulmonary sites including mediastinum adrenal glands liver or meninges and disseminated histoplasmosis is seen in immunocompromised patients so let us see the pathogenesis of histoplasmosis when the infection occurs by inhalation of the uh, fungal organism and then microphages ingest but can't kill organism without t cell help and so organisms multiply within the phagolysosomes and disseminate prior to the development of t cell immunity which takes 1 to t 1 to 2 weeks so in a, in patients who have adequate cell mediated immunity infection is controlled by a type 1 helper t cells that recognize fungal antigens and subsequently secrete interferon gamma this interferon gamma activates macrophages to kill intracellular yeast and histoplasma also induces macrophages to secrete tissue necrosis factor which recruits and stimulates other macrophages to kill histoplasma so now laboratory diagnosis 
laboratory diagnosis is done by serological test which is complement fixation test by immunodiffusion test which is which detects chnm antigen third is microscopic examination of infected tissues by routine hematocyanin and eosin stains and special stains are periodic acid sheep, sheep stain and gomuri methylmine silver stain and uh, koh mount and culture on sabarats agars can also be done so this is next picture here this is the gross of lung in histoplasmosis infection in even otherwise healthy people histoplasmosis in the lung forms granulomas and these granulomas on spontaneous resolution on after treatment undergo concentric calcifications producing a tree bark appearance in this image we can see this is what is known as tree bark appearance now this is microscopic picture of the same where we can see spherical to oval yeast forms which are aggregated in the cluster within the cytoplasm of the macrophages size of this yeast forms is usually 3 to 5 micrometer in diameter these are the special stains this is the microphotograph of past stain where the fungal organism is highlighted by magenta color now this is micro photograph of special stain gms stain where the yeast cells are highlighted by the black color next next mycosis is blastomycosis it is caused by blastomyces dermatitis and mode of transmission is inhalation of air borne spores and these spores are normally present in soil and endemic areas are north america Uh, blastomycosis occurs in three clinical forms first is pulmonary blastomycosis second is disseminated blastomycosis and third is a rare form which is primary cutaneous form in which there will be ulcerative lesions of the skin laboratory diagnosis is done by serological test microscopic examination of infected tissues by routine hematocyanin and eosin stain and special stains are pas and gms stain and fourth is a culture culture on separates agar this is a microscopic picture where we can see the yeast cells which divide by broad based budding and yeast cell has a thick double counter cell wall and visible nuclei their size is usually 5 to 15 micrometer in diameter the blastomyces dermatitis its characteristic is that it divides by broad based budding as seen in this picture so special stains for blastomyces are pas stain and gms stain here also pas stain is highlighting the uh, yeast cells which are dividing by broad based budding similarly in the gms gms stain next mycosis is cocidiomycosis it is caused by cocidiotes emitis mode of transmission is by the inhalation of fungal arthroconidia and reservoir is soil which is contaminated with this arthroconidia endemic areas are south southwestern united states and mexico let us see the pathogenesis and clinical features of cocidiotes emitis so first there will be inhalation of conidia of cocidiotes emitis and this infective arthroconidia ingested by alveolar macrophages block fusion of the phagosome and the lysosome so resist intracellular killing there will be delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction but most individuals remain asymptomatic and 10% of the infected people develop lung lesions in the form of influenza like syndrome which is characterized by cough shortness of breath fever and fatigue only less than 1% of infected people will develop disseminated cocidiotes emitis infection 
which involves meninges, skin, bone, adrenals, lymph node, spleen, and liver. Laboratory diagnosis done by complement fixation test, latex agglutination and agar immunodiffusion test, microscopic examination of infected tissues by routine HNE stain and special stains pass and GMS. And culture, culture on subalots agar. This is the microscopic picture where the within the micropages organisms are forming thick walled endospirulating spirules which are 20 to 60 micrometer in diameter and this some endospirules rupture and release endonucleate endospores which are 2 to 5 micrometer in diameter and this releasing of endospores superimposes a pyogenic reaction. In this image we can clearly see the endospirals is rupturing, releasing a uninucleate endospores. Special stains are past stain and GMS stain. Next is mycosis is paracochidiodomycosis. It is caused by paracochidiots, brazilensis. Mode of transmission is by inhalation of airborne spores. So, reservoir is soil which is contaminated with the spores. South America is the endemic area where this infection is common. Let us see the clinical pictures. Primary lung, in, there, can, there will be primary lung infection and less commonly there will be ulcerative lesions of the buccal, nasal and gastrointestinal tract mucosa. Laboratory diagnosis done by serological tests, microscopic examination of infected tissues by routine HNE stain and special stains pass and GMS. Culture on Sabaros Dextrose Agar. This is a micro photograph where we can see the fungal spores. These are the fungal spores which show peripheral budding. These are placed. Uh, and this is the lymphohistiocytic infiltrate with these are the multinucleated giant cells which show fungal spores with peripheral body. Special stains are past stain and GMS stain which highlights the uh, organism. And characteristic uh, morphology of this uh, organism is that it resembles to the Captain V's appearance. Uh, that is presence of multiple narrow based buds surrounding the large round fungal forms which is referred to as Captain Will's appearance. <coughs> now we have done with the systemic mycosis in immunocompetent individuals. Now we will see systemic mycosis in immunocompromised individuals. So first is candidiasis, second is cryptococcosis. Third is aspergillosis, fourth is zygomycosis, fifth is pneumocystis durovici pneumonia, and talonomycosis. We will see each one by one. Let us see candidiasis, which is also known as moniliasis. So there are approximately 200 species of candida found, but only 15 to 20 amongst them cause infections to humans, and these species are Candida albicans, Candida glabrata, Candida tropicalis, Candida paracillus, Candida cruzi, and Candida auris. Normally, Candida forms the endogenous normal flora of skin, gastrointestinal tract, and vagina, and they cause human infection. They cause pathogenic infections only when there is breach in the continuity of the mucosa or normal barriers. And Candida is the most prevalent fungal pathogen of humans. And what are the clinical features? So first clinical feature of Candidiasis is thrush. And what is thrush? There will be fluorid proliferation of the fungi which creates grey white dirty looking pseudomembranes composed of matted organisms and inflammatory de debris. It is seen as an oral thrush and it is seen in newborns, debilitated people, children receiving oral steroids for asthma and HIV positive patients. 
next form is candida eosophagitis in which there will be in the and it is seen in particularly aids patient eosophagus of aids patients and with hematological malignancies there will be same uh, pseudo membranes as seen in thrush seen in the eosophagus and these people will have symptoms as uh, dysphagia difficulty in swallowing and third is candida vaginitis which is uh, seen in usually diabetic women pregnant women and which are on oral contraceptive pills these patients have symptoms uh, like uh, itching and uh, thick curdy discharge fourth form is cutaneous candidiasis which is, which manifests in the form of onychomycosis which is infection of the nail folds infection of the hairs folliculitis infection of the penile skin which is called as balanitis and diaper rash diaper rash is seen in uh, infants which are in uh, more exposure with the wet diapers they it manifests as diaper rash fifth form is invasive candidiasis it is a severe form which uh, which manifests in the form of brain microabscesses and meningitis endophthalmitis myocardial infraction endocarditis and hepatic and renal abscesses let us see the pathogenesis of candida candida organism produces large number of functionally distinct adhesins which are involved in binding to fibrinogen fibronectin laminin epithelial cells and endothelial cells and it also produces aspartyl proteinases which is a enzyme which promote tissue invasion by degrading extracellular matrix proteins third it produces catalases which enables the organism to resist in oxidative killing by phagocytic cells and fourth mechanism is that candida albicans can form biofilms on implanted medical devices that reduce the organism susceptibility to immune responses and antifungal drug therapy and biofilms are the aggregate uh, biofilms are the aggregates of the fungal organisms so let us see what our body or what our immune system gives response against candidial infections so neutrophils and macrophages neutrophils and macrophages kill the candida by phagocytosis and oxidative killing oxidative killing by these phagocytes oxidative killing is the first line of host defense also candida yeast activates dendritic cells and dendritic cells uh, undergo by different mechanisms there will be immune response one of the mechanism is that beta 13 glucan expressed by the yeast engages dectin on dendritic cells and they further secrete interleukin 6 and interleukin 23 which which show the t helper 17 responses and this there will be secretion of t helper 17 and t helper 17 responses which will again recruits neutrophils and monocytes and kill the fungal organism so laboratory diagnosis can so laboratory rapid diagnosis is done di done by germ tube test which is also known as reynolds brood phenomenon so what is this germ tube test when fungal colonies are inoculated in human serum at 37 degree celsius there will be characteristic germ tube formation seen in the candida which is also known as reynolds brood formation second it can be cultured on corn meal agar corn meal agar is a specific agar used for candida third is by microscopic examination of infected tissues by routine hni stain and special stains are pas and gms so let us see the gross picture of candidial eosophagitis where we can see there is this grayish pseudo membrane formation in the distal eosophagus of severe candidiasis 
and this is the microscopic picture of this same yachani stain of esophageal candidiasis which is which reveals the dense mat of candida facial stains are gms stain and pas stain here gms stain has highlighted the organism in the black color while in the pas stain they are highlighted in the pink dark pink or magenta color So next is Candida auris infections. Candida auris is an emergent emerging pathogen associated with multiple nosocomial infections on five continents and colonization with Candida auris has been reported in nares, groin, axilla and rectum. Biofilm formation is the suggested virulence mechanism of this organism in intensive care units and central venous or urinary catheters. Antifungal resistance of this organism and difficulty in identification of species with traditional laboratory diagnosis has heightened the concern. And mortality with Candida auris infection can be as high as 50%. And uh, environmental cleaning to eliminate a source of infection is a challenge because Candida auris survives on dry and moist surfaces up to 14 days. So next fungal mycosis is cryptococcus. It is caused by cryptococcus neoformans and cryptococcus gutti. Cryptococcus neoformans mainly affects and forms severe infections in immunocompromised people, particularly people with AIDS. These are transmitted by inhalation of aerosolized fungal cells from the environment. And uh, they, they are prominent in patients with cell mediated immunity defect or patients of AIDS. Cryptococcus infection, the primary site of involvement is lung. Usually the, it forms a mild, uh, a mild and asymptomatic infection in healthy people. And in immunocompromised uh, people, major lesions are in the central nervous system involving the meninges, cortical gray matter and basal nuclei. In immunocompetent people and those with protracted disease means the disease has lasted for longer than usual time, fungi induce chronic granulomatous reaction composed of macrophages, lymphocytes, foreign body type of giant cells. And there can be separation as well as a rare granulomatous arteritis of the circle of Willis. In immunosuppressed people, organism may evoke no inflammatory reaction. So there will be gelatinous masses of fungi grow in the meninges or expand the perivascular Wirchow or Robin spaces within the gray matter, producing soap bubble lesions. Virja robin spaces are nothing but the spaces surrounding the arteries in the brain. In severely immunosuppressed people, cryptococcus neoformans may disseminate widely to the skin, liver, spleen, adrenals and bone. Let us see the pathogenesis of this organism. First, Cryptococcus neoformans has a polysaccharide capsule and this capsule has a glucuroxone menon protein which inhibits phagocytosis by alveolar uh, macrophages. Leukocyte, it, can cause, it causes leukocyte migration and recruitment of inflammatory cells. Second mechanism is that it produces melanin. Lacase in the yeast catalyzes the formation of melanin and this melanin has antioxidant properties. It decreases antibody mediated phagocytosis. It counteracts the effect of antifungal agents. It binds to the iron and provides nutrition to the organism. It provides cell wall integrity. Third mechanism is through enzymes. It secretes phospholipases which degrades cell wall components which aids in tissue invasion. It also, organism also secretes urease which helps neutralize the reactive oxygen species and pH of the phagocytic cell. 
So laboratory diagnosis done by culture on bird seed agar, which is also known as niger seed agar. It is specific for the cryptococcus. Second diagnosis is done by microscopic examination of infected tissues by routine H and E stain. Special stains are passed GMS music armen stain. We can also do the India ink preparation on CSF, which is which can be seen on microscopy. Advanced techniques are capsular antigen detection test by precipitation and latex, latex agglutination test. Urea test is positive for cryptococcus as we have seen it is one of the mechanism of cryptococcus. So let us see the microscopic picture where the cryptococcal yeast form we can see the characteristic thick, uh, thick gelatinous capsule containing a polysaccharide poly, containing a polysaccharide here this yeast are shown by the arrows and in gms stain these uh, yeast forms are highlighted in black color this is the india ink preparation of csf India ink preparation is a negative stain because we are not staining the organism but we are staining the background and the organism will be seen as a it will not take the stain so it is a negative stain here we can see the organisms this is the picture of music carmine stain in perivascular virtual robin space where the a thick gelatinous capsule has taken the stain and highlighted in intense red color. So next fungal mycosis is aspergillosis. It is caused by various species of aspergillosis. Aspergillosis fumigatus, aspergillosis niger and aspergillosis flavus. Mode of transmission is same that is by inhalation of the spores in immunocompetent individuals aspergillosis causes allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis and in immunocompromised individuals it can cause serious sinusitis pneumonia and invasive diseases so clinical forms are allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis aspergilloma invasive aspergillosis and it can cause superficial infection in the form of automycosis and mycotic keratitis which which affects ear and eye respectively. Let us see the pathogenesis of aspergillosis. Alveolar macrophages recognize aspergillus conidia 2, toll like receptors 2, and lectin dating 1, which recognizes beta 1 3 glucan in the fungal cell wall, and then subsequently there will be activation of phagocytes to kill, to ingest and kill the conidia. Then further, toll-like receptors trigger the release of pro-inflammatory mediators including tissue necrosis factor, interleukin-1 and chemokines. There are also antioxidant defenses including melanin pigment, mannitol, catalases and superoxide dismutase. Aspergillus, aspergillus organism has a aflatoxin secretion which is seen on the crops which are not stored properly which are stored in moist and humid conditions and this aflatoxin inhalation can cause acute and chronic hepatotoxicity and increased risk to liver cancer laboratory diagnosis is done by culture on suburbs agar medium microscopic examination of bronchial washing bulk fluid and tissue, se tissue sections Routine hematosylin and eosin stain and special stains are past stain, GMS stain, lactophenol, cotton blue stain. Diagnosis can also be done by detection of galactomannan antigen by enzyme immunoassay test, detection of aspergillus DNA by PCR amplification test. This is a newer technique. And skin tests are dual, immediate, and arthritis type. This is the microscopic picture where these are the septate filaments which are seen branching and acute branching with an acute angles. These organisms are usually 5 to 10 micrometer thick. 
and fruiting bodies of aspergillus which are round forms of the aspergillosis special these are the microphotographs of the special stains past stain gms stain and this is a beautiful picture of lactophenol cotton blue stain where we can see the organism morphology very beautifully So let us see the invasive aspergillosis. It is an opportunistic infection that is confined to immunosuppressed host. Primary lesion is found in the lung, and uh, in the lung there is necrotizing pneumonia with sharply delineated, rounded, grey foci and hemorrhagic borders, which is which are called as target lesions. There can be hepatogenous dissemination to heart valves, heart walls, and brain. and this as invasive aspergillosis has a tendency to invade blood vessels mean it, it is angio invasive there so there will be areas of hemorrhage and infraction are usually superimposed on the necrotizing and inflammatory tissue reactions so next fungal mycosis zygomycosis reservoir is ubiquitous in soil and their spores are present in air and dust they are worldwide in distribution and their incidence is increased in covid pandemic in last 2 years major predisposing factors are neutropenia corticosteroid use diabetes mellitus iron overload and breakdown of the cutaneous barrier so now zygomycosis is a broad term and the there are mucorrhizal order and entomophthorous order the species of the mucorrhizal order are rhizopus mucor and apsidia while conidiobolus and basidiobolus belong to the entomophthorous order rhizopus mucor and apsidia affect the immunodeficient people and they can form rhino orbito cerebral infection pulmonary infection gastrointestinal infection and cutaneous infection while Conidiobolus and basidiobolus can affect immunocompetent individual too, and they form subcutaneous zygomycosis, chronic inflammatory or granulomatous response. This is a chart showing characteristic pictures of these both. So for mucorrhizal order, pathogenesis is by aggressive angio invasion, followed by septic thrombosis and tissue infarction. but separative and granulomatous reaction can be seen by in entomophthorous order granulomatous inflammation with presence of high p initiated by amorphous intensely eosinophilic splendor hopping phenomenon is seen the organisms belong to mycorrhizal order have broad non septic thick ribbon like uh, which branch at right angle high p will high p showing right angle branching while in entomophthorous order the organisms are broad thin wall high p and there will be septa with conidia treatment is different for these both mucorrhizal order treatment is liposomal amphotericin b and fluconazole while for entomophthorous order infections treatment is done by oral iodized potassium and itraconazole here these are the beautiful pictures of mucor mycosis which uh, we where we can see the, they are causing vasculitis in the first picture angio invasion in the second picture choroidal invasion in the third picture and perineural invasion in the fourth picture and in the microscopy they are seen as a septic thick ribbon like high p with variable width and with right angle branching this is the special stains microscopic picture where which highlight which highlights the thick ribbon like aseptic ip this is the gms stain highlighting the organism in black color this is another beautiful picture where this is a past stain and thick aseptic ribbon like ip are seen in the glomerulus at autopsy and in this picture meninger blood vessels are showing angio invasive mucor species 
Next, we will see the conidiobolomycosis, which we have recently diagnosed in our institute, which is a rare fungal infection, which belongs to the endometrial order of legomycosis. So, this is the special stain, EMS stain, which is showing the fungal organism spore forms, which are highlighted in black color. Also, this is another picture of same same case GMS stain where the broad thin walled hypi will show wide angled branching and they are centrally twisted with cone shaped ends or tapering ends. This morphology is very characteristic of this infection. So now, this is the microscopic picture where we can see the fungal organisms are surrounded by radiating intensely eosinophilic material which and this phenomenon is called as splendor hopley phenomenon this laboratory diagnosis is done by histopathological examination of the tissues by hn stain and special states like pass and gms laboratory diagnosis is done by KOH mount and culture and suborots agar medium. The next fungal mycosis pneumocystis gyrovecae. It is the actually the pneumocystic gyrovecae is the organism which causes pneumocystis pneumonia in immunocompromised patients. It is a yeast like fungus and it is transmitted by inhalation of air ball spores. Previously, this organism was uh, was seen as a parasite, parasite and not fungus because it occurs in three forms which are tropozoites, sporocytes and cis forms. So clinical forms are uh, mainly it is it causes uh, pulmonary infection manifesting as rapidly progressive bilateral pneumonia. There can be extra pulmonary infection which showing involvement of spleen, bone marrow and liver. Pneumocystic gyrovecae pneumonia is an is a significant opportunistic infection in AIDS patients, particularly when it is untreated. So let us see the pathogenesis. Uh, patients who are at risk of for developing pneumocystic gyrovecae pneumonia are HIV positive patients with CD4 count less than 200 per microliter. And patients who are undergoing immunosuppressive therapy uh, who are given large doses of corticosteroids and patients who have immunodeficiency diseases. There, will, there can be recent exposure or reactivation of the latent infection where the pneumocystic gyrovecae organisms propagate in the alveoli and they, there will be inflammatory process which leads to hypoxia, impaired gas exchange, abnormalities with surfactant and respiratory failure is the more severe form. Laboratory diagnosis is done by uh, histopathological examination, bulk fluid examination and polymerase chain reaction test and fluorescein conjugated antibody strand. These two are the newer diagnostic methods. This is the micro photographs of the lung of uh, where the alveolar spaces are filled with pink foamy amorphous material which are composed of proliferative fungi and cell debris. This fungi has cup shaped a uh, cup shaped or they are oval with central dot. Bulk fluid examination is the or uh, bulk fluid is the main sample for uh, diagnosis of pneumocystis gyrovecae pneumonia and in this uh, micro photograph we can see the cyst of pneumocystis gyrovecae in bronchial alveolar lavage which are stained by GMS stain and here also very this very beautiful picture where the internal nuclei of the cyst which are up to 18 number are seen in the gymsa stain of bulk fluid. Another special stains are toluidin blue and GMS stain. In the GMS, the fungal organism is highlighted in black color and in toluidin blue as the name suggests, 
the organism is highlighted in blue color so the next fungal myco mycosis tyleromycosis and it is caused by tyleromycosis marni b and this causes opportunistic mycosis in diabetic person they their reproduction is by binary fission and they are endemic in thailand hong kong vietnam and indonesia tyleromycosis has different show different pathogenesis in patient, individuals with aids and who don't have aids so in aids patients the, they will infect lymph nodes skin bone and bone marrow while in non aids patients they will infect lymph node liver lung and kidney the tissue reaction in aids patient is particularly necrotizing type of new, uh, tissue reaction but in non aids patient reaction is separative and can be granulomatous also the yeast like organisms aggregate in aggregate intracellularly in macrophages and in extracellular areas they divide by binary fission so clinical features in aids patients there will be fever with or without chills respiratory signs cutaneous and subcutaneous lesions septicemia and gastrointestinal lesions in other immunocompromised patients the first three clinical features are same but additionally there will be lymphadenopathy hepatomegaly and splenomegaly organomegaly will be there and there will be osteoarticular lesions can also occur microscopy in my, this is the microscopic okay. image where there are aggregates of yeast organisms which are 2 to 4 micrometer in diameter are seen in the cytoplasm of the macrophage and as we have already seen central fission or binary fission is the characteristic feature of tyleromycosis tyleromycosis marnipi laboratory diagnosis is done by histopathological examination by routine HNE stain and special stains like pass and GMS stain, KOH mount and culture and suborders agar medium. These are my references. These are my references. Thank you.